All right, everybody. <laughs> we we are live here for this Stogie 401 show. Uh, I am here with my partner in crime, Mr. Michael Williams. Uh, how you doing, Mike? Uh, I've been better, but uh, I'm here. Uh, looking forward to chatting with Mr. Barry Stein from Miami Cigar Company. You can't, you can see his picture, but you can't see the video. We've been having some issues. Uh, actually, Barry's been having some issues. I got to throw the blame on Barry, not us. Um, at, at least I'm consistent. This that, is the second time, second location, same problem. That's right, Barry. I'll give you that. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, Barry, welcome back to Stogie 411. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Ah, no problem. So, uh, so what's new since we talked to you seven months ago? Well, I've adapted to uh, the life in North Cuba, Miami. Yeah. Uh, learning a little bit of Spanish, playing dominoes every day, drinking my Cuban coffee. Uh, better situated at work at Miami Cigar. We had a, a lot of new projects come out at the trade show this year. Um, but I guess we'll talk about those a little bit later. And uh, we got some uh, projects already in the works for next year. Um, you know, next year will be a milestone year for our Nesta Miranda. He's going to be turning 70. Um, so, you know, the past has been good and the future looks even better. Nice, nice. So you're, you're transitioning very well then. Uh, I would say so. Good, good. I believe uh, Jason would say so. Say, show, say, show. say so. Say as so. Well. <laughs> yeah, I went to the Porky Pig School of Speech, so, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Uh, well, correct. you brought up in your, your, uh, entrance there about some of the the new things that miami has brought out and there's a you know you guys have like what three square miles at ipcpr of of uh items that you guys have uh why don't you go in and and tell our fine listeners about some of the new products that you have out or coming out in the near future and tell them how they're going all right we'll start with the uh miami side of things uh from Nesta Miranda this year, we had the special selection come out in a Connecticut. Um, the Connecticut is available in the coffee break, five and a half by 54, the pyramids and the six by 60. It features an Ecuadorian shade grown wrapper uh, over Nicaraguan binder and filler. It's, uh, you know, forget about I work for Miami Cigar and Company, but it's become one of my favorite cigars. Um, since the cigar first came out in uh, late August, I've already gone through seven boxes personally. And uh, I wasn't a big Connecticut guy until we released that cigar. Also, uh, we followed up this year with the Grand Reserve 2012. Uh, this year is over a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler. The, one of the big differences between the Grand Reserve this year and last year is we added more Lajero into the uh, mix. So it's a stronger cigar. It's probably the strongest cigar that Miami has released to date. Uh, we also redid the Dano for 2012. The Dano is named after Nesta Miranda's son, who's no longer with us. Um, it's a 7 by 56 cigar with a slight pigtail cap. As a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, we also amped up the blend a little bit on that. We added a little bit more uh, Lajero for a little bit more strength. And uh, La Serena came out with the Merlion, uh, which is a mythological creature from Singapore that's half lion, half mermaid. Being the cigars made at La Aurora, which is headed by the Leo Guillermo Leon, which means lion. Merlion was the perfect name for that cigar. Uh, La Aurora came out with a few new cigars this year. One is the Fernando Leon, which is uh, which was Guillermo Leon's father. It features a Corojo binder and a Corojo wrapper over uh, Brazilian, Peruvian, and Dominican uh, fillers. And they also have the Diamond Perforito, which is a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, which seems to be the, uh, the theme for this year. And all those cigars that I just mentioned have begun to ship. Um, also on the Miami side, uh, you have the Añaranzas, which is a box press based on last year's Grand Reserve. And uh, in about two or three more weeks, you'll have to see on Año ship from La Aurora, uh, which will feature an ultra-rare uh, Maduro version, which uh, consumers were only able to get one in 10 boxes they ordered. So for every 10 boxes stores ordered, they got one of those boxes. So it'll be kind of hard to find. It'll be, I believe, highly sought after by collectors and connoisseurs and people that enjoy the Cian Años. Uh, 
but it'll be hard now, to find. With that on the Miami side, yes. I wanted to ask the the San Anos is the one that, uh, of course, I'm going to ask you about <laughs> uh, the blend. I know there were other sizes released that were a different blend than the original, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this with them bringing them out now, is it going to continue with that newer blend, or is it going back to the old? Well, the original, the original release of the Cian Anos, the biggest difference between the, the original Cian Anos and the one that was on the shelves later was the aged factor of the okay. tobacco. Um, when they first came out, all the tobacco was aged for four years. Um, once that limited release came out and you started seeing them in the other sizes and the other shapes, they weren't, the tobacco wasn't aged for four years. You know, it went through its typical aging process. You know, it sat in the factory in the aging rooms for a couple of months and then okay. it shipped. Um, but the tobacco being used was from a more current crop compared to a, you know, an older crop, crop that was four years old. So the Cian Anos that's coming out this year features a crop that's four years old. Oh. So it's back to that same aged process as the original. Okay. Uh, with the exception, of, with the exception of the uh, Edition Especial, which is the Maduro version, um, the binder and the filler on that is aged four years. The wrapper isn't; uh, it's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, uh, but I believe that only has, uh, I think, a year's age on okay. it. So, and that's the only difference between the Maduro and the and the regular line is just the basically the wrapper. Just the wrapper. Just the wrapper. Um, we found that the, well, I should say, the factory found that the blend worked well with just a wrapper change while remaining true to the binder and filler. Um, so that's why that's coming out in a limited edition. Cool. That coffee break, Barry, did you say that was a mild cigar? Did you even tell us? The the Connecticut? Yeah. Um, it's, it's not mild in the sense of other Connecticut's on the market that might be Dominican grown. Mm -hmm. Still have that Nicaraguan um, effect to the cigar. It's milder than uh, our other lines, but there's still there's still some of that Nicaraguan. So it's it's more of a it's more of a new age Connecticut than a traditional Connecticut. Okay. And I will have to say I agree. Yeah, uh, Matt said in the chat he said uh, Fernando Leone was outstanding, and I have to agree. The the ones I that Barry was kind enough to send me before I, I smoked them and. I really like that cigar. I'm I'm definitely looking for that uh, locally whenever it comes out. I want to try the different sizes and and see how it goes. Yeah, I appreciate the the photographs that Matt put up on his site. I think it's cigarporn.com, yeah. and uh, the shop that I hang out in Miami uh, neighborhood humidor 140 40 Southwest H Street. Little plug for my friends, uh, but that's one of the popular cigars here as well. The Fernando Leon. And uh, no, so far, it's been well, very well received, and uh, it's a little bit different than the uh, the norm that's been coming from La Aurora. The, the Corojo wrapper and the Corojo binder it has a little bit of spice to it, has a little bit of a kick to it. And uh, actually, the owner of the shop just came over to show me that he's smoking a Fernando Leon as we speak. So, um, and he's into it pretty much. So he started smoking it before we started talking about it. So. It's doing well for us. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm sure the boys at La Aurora are happy. And uh, I'm glad to hear the consumers are happy. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of good things about the Diamond Perverito as well, too. Yeah, I've, I've had a few at the show. Um, I got a box in my computer bag. Uh, my, uh, my former business partner is in from New York. So after dinner, that's going to be a celebratory, uh, you know, get back together smoke. Uh, um, produces a nice amount of smoke, which seems to be the new age of cigars as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, just full body, full of flavor, easy through the nose. It's really good cigar. Now, with, with you working at uh, Miami Berry, uh, seems like your videos are right. lagged here. I, that's why I was sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I was just, I was watching you. It looked like you were still talking and it was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, with with working video. there now, with the Fernando Leone especially, I'm curious, have you had a chance to try the original cigar that he had made for him and then compare it to this one? Is it similar, do you know? Well, well I, the, just like all of us, we, we tend to change over time on what we like. 
Um, when he first released his cigar, when he was still alive, you know, he had the blend that he would give out um, to close friends and family. And that cigar was released in a, to a very few shops. Um, you know, I think Matt Sherman in New York or Davidoff in New York, one of the shops in New York had the original blend. Uh, but as he got older, he, he changed the blend. He changed the blend because he evolved as a cigar smoker. So the blend that's out there now was the blend that he smoked in his later years in life. Um, so it's not the it's not the original blend that some of the shops in New York saw or various shops around the country. Uh, but I, I would say maybe like the last decade of his life, he, he changed his cigar so it was a little bit stronger because um, he evolved into a little bit of a stronger cigar smoker. So that's the Fernando Leon that you see on the on the shelf there. Cool. Let's take a question from the chat room. They want to know uh, how they're curious how this year's IPCPR was different for Barry now that he's on the manufacturer side. First of all, like uh, I'm, I'm extremely pro blogger. Um, I was a blogger. I'm still a blogger at heart. Um, but I was able to see why some of the manufacturers feel the way they do. Um, I'm, I was able to understand the complaints about the bloggers that maybe I didn't understand as a blogger. Um, there were some sites that while I'm in the middle of a conversation with a customer that would cut off the conversation and, and not realize that the primary reason we're at IPCPR is for sales. Um, that we, why we want to give all the information possible to bloggers. They, they are secondary. So I, I, I was able to understand that for the first time. Um, I was also realized that walking through the uh, IPCPR floor, I felt more accepted by uh, other manufacturers. I was no longer that guy there for free samples. I was now part of the industry. Um, but other than that, you know, it felt the same on the Miami La Aurora side because I've developed a relationship and a friendship with them over the last two years before I started working for them. Um, it wasn't tremendously different, but I was able to understand the manufacturer point of view with the blogger question and the blogger issue. Uh, but at the same time, I would never change um, how bloggers are allowed at the show. Um, I believe that you guys are an integral part of our industry. I believe that you guys can gear the public to what to smoke, to lead them what to smoke. And I believe certain bloggers have the ability to make or break a cigar. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, you know, with bloggers, I like the idea, not even of steering somebody toward a cigar, but just the fact that so many people don't know what cigars come out. You know, if, if it wasn't for yeah. IPCPR coverage, you know, and, if, and Stogie 411, of course, they, they wouldn't know. You know, we get the, the 411 on everything. Ha <laughs> ha, how'd you like that, Mike? See how I got that in there? Yeah, you should be proud. You're on your eight. You're on your eight yeah, game today. That's right. I got a you. bonus. Well, also, part of, also part of the issue is you know cigar shops can't carry everything right. that comes out. Um, if and if all the magazines advertised everything that came out, you would be looking at a thousand right. page volume. Right. Right. So you know, getting the information out there is is a difficult task. It's part of my task is you know marketing and advertising, mm -hmm. and guys like you make that job easier for me. So you know, I appreciate it. The company appreciates it, and uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, Barry, let me ask you this: being on the other side of the of the of the stick now. How, how do you guys, yourself, and I don't know if you could speak for the rest of the guys at Miami, but how do you guys take the criticism if someone, you know, there's so many cigars out there and not everybody likes every cigar in the world, okay? So how do you handle it if someone, a blogger, whoever, customer comes up to you and say, ah, it just wasn't for me? You know, how do you guys handle that uh, negative side of all the positive side? Yeah, for, for me, what, I, what I'll do is if I see a negative review online, I'll reach out to the blogger. Uh, you know, I'll speak to him about what it was that bothered him. You know, if the cigar that he got wasn't properly stored for or properly cared for, it could affect the cigar. Um, I will offer the blogger some more samples to try directly from our humidor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know some people who have done reviews from the IP, IPCPR samples. And now you're looking at this, a cigar that was sitting out at the trade show, wasn't in a humidor. Right. It went in your luggage. You now transported it 
how many miles at 30,000 feet <laughs> and you put it back into the humidor. You know what? It's going to change. It's going to change the cigar. I mean, sure. just like, it's kind of like ice cream. If you let ice cream melt and then you put it in the freezer and you let it, you know, refreeze, it's not going to taste the same. No, you're right. So, um, you know, we'll reach out to them. We'll see what we can do to give for them to give it another shot. But, you know, got to realize that not everybody's going to like everything. And, you know, my New York mentality wants to put out a hit on them. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And hopefully they'll like the next cigar that comes out, you know. But, you know, and hopefully people will be responsible enough to, you know, let people know it's their opinion and you know, That's their opinion is. isn't necessary gospel. Nope. Uh, so we invite everybody to try our cigars, whether it gets a good review or a bad review, and make that decision for yourself. So good. Now, nice. do you think you had said with the uh, IPCPR samples and people doing reviews and things? Oh, oh hey, gun right. smoke. Look, hey, he's, hey, he's, got, he's putting the head out already. He's got gun smoke coming out. If I see a Jesus. shadow walk by my window. It was just, it was just a question. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was a question. Relax. Oh. <laughs> But with those uh, IPCPR samples and uh, bloggers, I, I know there's there's a lot of bloggers. The the hardest thing to do is to sit on a cigar that you know you have there in your hands and you want to get out there, you want to review it, you want to tell people about it. I mean, it, isn't it hard as a company, now, now that you're on the manufacturer's side also, I mean, Miami released quite a few new cigars this year. You know, as a whole, you know, the, the whole company. Yeah, it, it would be awful hard for right. you guys well, so, to send complete samples out to everybody. Do you think it's okay to use the IPCPR yeah, it, or would you rather not? It, it, as long as you put a disclaimer out there that you're using an IPCPR sample or you... I, I, look, I, don't, I didn't write the book on blogging. I'm, I'm not going to tell somebody how to blog. Uh, I'm opinionated to a fault. But I think a disclaimer should always be put how their samples were achieved, whether it was gifted to you from our sales rep, whether it was from IPCPR, whether you bought it from a catalog or you bought it at a brick and mortar, in the review it should state. And people should use that to a degree as a judging point for how fresh and how true the samples were. Um, I, I knew when I was a blogger and somebody put their IPCPR samples, I said, you know what? It might change because a lot of times, you know, companies send out stuff for IPCPR so they can have the samples, but they might not be ready yet. Um, you know, case in point, we had the Anyaranzas at the trade show that we were giving out to consumers and you were able to get a fair basis for what the cigar was, but the cigar didn't begin to ship till Thursday of this past week. So you're now looking at seven, eight weeks later. So the gar has seven to eight more weeks of aging. It's going to change the cigar. All right. Now, we're going to let everybody know. Barry is at his local shop. That is their door to the humidor. <laughs> Just want to let everybody know. Barry's not doing some crazy stuff over there. That That's the door to the humidor. So if you hear it, they're making money. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it's really bad gas. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. Oh, well, Barry, sorry. you went over this stuff from oh, Miami you're themselves. What about uh, branching out now into some of the, like you said, the Anuranzas, uh, you know, La Serena? Yeah. We'll say, what was the question? Let us know about the other new things that Miami has out, uh, not focusing on Miami themselves, but La Aurora, uh, the Anuranzas. On your, on your, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, the onion onions, the onion onions is a Miami cigar product. You know, it's made in Nicaragua. It, it is Miami cigar. It's based on the Nesta Miranda Grand Reserve. Uh, before the trade show, we released the Merlion, which was a, a new line from La Serena. Um, it comes in three sizes: Robusto, Toro, and Grand Toro. Um, it features five different types of tobaccos. Um, it still has the large band. The large band has become a trademark, so to speak, of the La Serena. Uh, but this one's cool. It's in two pieces. So when you remove the band, you still got the top half of the band on the cigar. And only the bottom half comes off so you can continue to smoke it you know, with the band. Uh, which we prefer you do because it's free advertisement for us when you're in the cigar shop. People can tell what you're smoking. Um, from La Aurora, like we were saying, we got the Fernando Leon, which was Guillermo Leon's father. Um, you got the Preferito, uh, black diamond, excuse me, just the diamond. Preferito diamond comes in a black tube. Uh, 
and then the Cian Anos, of course, uh, the hundred year highest rated cigar uh, from La Aurora, highest rated Dominican cigar of the year of the top 25 from Cigar Aficionado, which I believe was 2004. Um, so it should be a good year for uh, for both parties. You know, we consider ourselves one big happy family. You know, Nestor and Guillermo Leon, they go way back. Um, before I started working for the company, I was lucky enough to develop a friendship with Guillermo Leon. So I don't feel like so much that I'm an employee coming into a strange company. I've had a relationship um, with both sides of the both sides, the Miami side, the Dominican side. So it's all been good. Well, let's talk a little bit, Barry. We didn't I, I didn't heard anybody mention it unless my hearing's going. But let's talk a little bit about Tatiana. I see it says here. On your website, uh, coming soon, you got a new Tatiana Moco. Yeah, the Tatiana Moco is already out. It's available in three sizes. Um, it's exactly what the name says. You know, it's a cigar that's heavily flavored with mocha. Um, we got the whole FDA battle going on, which I think is important to discuss. You know, the FB, FDA wants to regulate cigars. Um, they feel that cigars are marketed toward kids. Um, they feel that smoking is up among teenagers, which I say bullshit. Um, I think as an industry, we are very careful not to market the kids. And I don't know anybody in high school that's walking into a cigar store and putting $10 down to buy a cigar. Um, that's that's not the issue. But once again, it's government looking to become bigger. It's government looking to control our choices. You know, I just moved from New York to Miami, and in New York, you can't buy a soda that's over 16 ounces anymore. And uh, when a mother gives birth to a child, if they give birth to a child in a city hospital, the city hospital is pushing the mothers to breastfeed. They won't give them the option of. Um, uh, formula unless it's asked for. Um, so there's an issue with government right now trying to control um, what they want, what they think is best for us. Uh, but I'm an adult. You know, we're all adults. We can all make our choices. We have to get involved. We have to tell the FDA, um, <clears throat> lay off cigars. Let us make our decisions. You know what? If you want to ban smoking in, in public parks and why I don't agree with that, you know, it's your prerogative. I don't think it should be, but if I want to walk into a cigar store and I want to sit down and I want to light up a cigar and I want to talk to my friends about the issues within my community, you know, this is our barbershop. This is our neighborhood human. This is the place that we get together on a daily basis to enjoy a right, to use a product that's legal, to use a product that we all enjoy and make the choice freely to do so lay off of our cigars, you know, let your congressman know that this is our choice. Yeah, there's a lot more uh, important things out there right now than trying to regulate cigars when, like you said, how many kids are going to even have the money to go in and just constantly keep buying cigar after cigar, you know, from a shop. It ju it just makes no sense. Every shop that I go, that I, you know, I go to the person looks under 24, 25 years old, you know, we ask for ID. Um, you know, it's not marketed toward teenagers. This is not a, a an industry that somebody who does not have a job in high school can afford to enjoy. It's an adult industry. You know? No. But I could go on and on and on, and I'm going to sure I'll wind up pissing somebody off if I do. So next subject. <laughs> That's all right. Piss them all off. We piss people off all the time. We don't mind. I wanted to bring up with the Tatiana since uh, Mike brought that up. How how well do the flavored cigars do for Miami? Do they do they sell pretty well? I mean, we've all heard with Acid <clears throat> being like the number one selling cigar. I was just curious with another manufacturer. How well do your flavors do? Well, Tatiana is the number one flavored cigar in the United States. Um, the difference between us and the other cigar that you mentioned, they, they call themselves infused. We call ourselves flavored. So there's a difference there. Uh, but they're an integral part of the company. They, they are a large part of our company. They account for a majority of our sales. Um, so... You know, as a company, we're especially interested on in which way the FDA is going to go. And uh, this week, I had to actually smoke new samples of new flavored cigars that we might come out with next year if the FDA um, lays off of our cigars. So, 
that was uh that was something different for me you know i was smoking a cigar that tasted just like trey leche so which is uh which is a dessert down here in miami so it wasn't fun but it was different so well, you know and that's the weird thing uh, next year we should have, right, i'm sorry next year we should have um most likely we'll have some new tatiana flavors coming out next year yeah, I was gonna say the weird thing is in inside the industry you keep hearing about the flavored cigars selling so well, and you go to your local shop, and you don't hardly ever see anybody with a flavored cigar, yet they're selling like hotcakes everywhere. It, it's <clears throat> it's just kind of interesting to hear the take from your side compared to the side that most people see when they go to their local shop. Yeah, well, you know, we don't sell our cigars like in drugstores or bodegas, the Tatianas. Uh, you know, they're sold primarily in, in premium cigar shops. So they, the Tatianas tend to be more expensive than the cigars that you would traditionally um, see in those types of stores, which uh, answers a question from Matt in uh, the chat room. So a, Tati, a Tatiana a traditional cigar uh, traditional size like the classic is still going to sell for five six dollars a cigar um compared to some of the the machine made cigars that are selling for a dollar fifty two dollars that's the separation between the two you know these are handmade products where others are machine made products so there has to be a, a separation between the two there has to be a defining a definition between the two types of cigars as well now nice. well, barry what no, I was going to just ask Barry uh, with the Taddy out of line with the with the flavors that you have now. What flavor would you like to see in a Tatiana cigar? Pina Colada, uh, mojito, mojito. You know, rum and coke. Something, something that I won't have a problem smoking if I had. To. I think Barry's looking for a drink. So, but I'll smoke. I'll, I'll smoke them if I'm too. That's what it is, you know. It's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> well, Barry, uh, Matt had a question in there. What surprises, if any, now that you found seven months later working for a manufacturer? What are some of the surprises? The, the surprise is more not about the cigar industry. It's more about the lifestyle in Miami. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I come from New York. When you need something done, you get it done in two or three days. Down here in Miami, it takes two to three weeks. So it's it's much more time consuming, but it's much more laid back at the same time. Um, I've learned to develop patience, something I did not have when I first moved down here, which was probably the biggest learning curve for me. I, I was butting heads with people left and right because things weren't happening fast enough for me. So with the industry, everything with the job is what I expected it to be. Everything's what I wanted it to be. Um, it's just the Miami lifestyle, the Caribbean mentality of, you know, we'll get it done when we get it done. There's no rush. So. There's so many different place shops down there in, in Miami. Uh, do you tend to have time to get around to different shops? You know, padilla has got a place going on. There's tons of people down there. Do you yeah, have- that, that- that place isn't owned by Padilla anymore, the one on, on Southwest A Street. I've been there. I, I've met a few uh, few customers of ours that have been in town. I've met them over there. But <clears throat> I'm a creature of habit. So every night I pretty much spend at the same shop. Um, I hang out, play my dominoes, drink on my Cuban coffee, um, bullshitting with my friends. Um, I hang out at a place during what, my lunch break. I go to Sabor Havana and uh, Doral. But, uh, I'm, you know, I'm a creature of habit, you know. Some guys, they want to go to a different shop, and I'm happy with, you know, the friends I have. So I don't have a desire to bounce from place to place. Do you you find yourself, Barry, now smoking more than you were when you were blogging? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yesterday I had eight cigars, so. There you go. Yeah, I'm only on one. I'm smoking my first. I'm smoking a 107 Salomon. There you go. I don't know. I don't know if the video's still up. But nah, it's first. not, buddy. Right now, we just got you, we got you smiling, so don't worry about it. You're good. I, I brought my 107 up to the camera so everybody can see what I'm smoking. So Barry's is the same, except you're mm-hmm. you're doing the Salomon, you said, right? Yeah, there's only 30 stores in the country have these cigars, very limited edition. Um, if anybody wants to know which stores have them, you them, send me a message on Twitter. Um, there is MCC Barry. Or uh, my first name at mccusa.net is my email. So if you got any questions about our product, you know, feel free to drop me a line. 
the door to my office is always open via Twitter or email. And hell, if you want to come by the offices in Miami, stop by and have a cigar. You want to welcome to join us as well. That's, I, I was going to ask that with uh, Miami Cigar being such a big company. Do you actually have a lounge inside your headquarters down there in, in Florida? Yeah. Our second floor, we refer to a war room. Um, on the wall, there's heads of various animals that Nestor has hunted over the course of his life. Um, but we have a, uh, an executive board table up there. We basically sit and use that as our lounge. Um, the way, you know, smoking laws are, you have to have a separate area uh, within an establishment to smoke. And we utilize the second floor, which is where my office is. Um, so I get to smoke all day long. Nice. Well, you know, Barry, me with me without a cigar is not a happy camper. So. <laughs> well, Barry, outside of Miami cigars, what other cigars are you have you been smoking as of late and that you're enjoying? <clears throat> I only smoke Miami cigar product. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, stop now. Come on. They're, listen, Nestor and Garrel's not watching. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I enjoy the four kick stuff a lot. No. Um, I find myself smoking a lot of John Huber stuff. Um John actually has been very good to me, you know, uh, it was nice seeing him at the tweet up, but, uh, honestly, nine out of 10 cigars I'm smoking it are that our stuff. Cause Hey, I don't have to pay for them. So, right. you know, I went from spending $16,000 a year on cigars to, I think this year I've only spent about 3000. So, well, that's good for the, but so you begin a new caddy then soon, right? I'm driving a Buick now. I bought a grandfather's car. So you did. Everybody was making fun of me. You know, I bought an old man's car, but I got a good deal. And, you know, <laughs> hell, I'm living down in Miami, so this is God's waiting room. So you're you're not wearing wool pants and Velcro sneakers, are you? I'm not gonna stand up. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. But also uh, later on this year, you know, next year, February 14th, is uh, Nesta Miranda's 70th birthday. Um, we may or may not have something coming out um, to help celebrate the uh, milestone in Nesta's life. Nice. Um, haven't shared that with anybody yet. It's in the uh, beginning stages, the development stages, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But uh, it should be it should be something that you might see come February if everything falls into place. Nice. That's my one year anniversary to my wife. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. She hasn't killed you yet, so that's a plus. She hasn't. I don't know how she hasn't, but she has She's trying, though. Don't you hear how he sounds? She's been punching him in the throat a couple yeah. times. <laughs> I think we did our show last year, the end of January, like the, the first month I was here. Might have been a, maybe the first week of February. It was probably a week or so or two weeks before you got married. Yes. And remember, we were joking around, asking if you were nervous and what have you, and... Uh, Allegedly, you weren't, so... No, I wasn't nervous, man. She was, but I wasn't. She was probably more second-guessing herself, if I said. Awesome. Oh, uh, all right. Well, with uh, the the Miami cigars themselves, and with you being there now, now you, you mentioned about, like, the tweet-up. How is it with going to these events? Because <clears throat> you used to go, you know, as a blogger, and now you can go as a manufacturer. And, and setting IPCPR aside... How is it for the more localized events or for these more uh, uh, blogger events, Twitter events, things like that? How, how do you find yourself in those situations? Yeah, I try to remain true to who I am. You know, I'm still a blogger at heart. You know, I might work for Miami Cigar Company. Uh, I might represent them at these events, them, Laura, Aurora, Tatiana, but at the end of the day, I'm still a blogger at heart. So when I go to these events, it's just hanging out with people I consider to be friends, people that I know via Twitter, Facebook, um, when I used to run my website. So for me, I don't treat it as different. You know, I do the marketing, I do the advertising. Uh, so my job is to talk about the cigars, and that's what basically I did on the blog. So instead of you know speaking about 20 different cigars, you know I'm focused on of course the company that I work for. You got our sales rep who's there with us, so it's his job to do the selling and what have you. Me, I just want to you know I want to hang out. I'm one of the guys. At least I like to think I'm one of the guys. So it hasn't changed at all um, for me in that aspect. You know, maybe maybe I'm trying to be a little bit a little bit less controversial these days, but other than that, 
I wouldn't say it's changed at all. That's actually good to hear. Uh, I hear a lot of people, you know, when they when they get into a certain industry, all of a sudden everything changes, and it, it's just kind of sad to see how they they end up turning out. It, it's nice that you're sticking to your to your guns and your roots. Yeah, you know, I'd rather I'd rather be fired for somebody that I've always been than to make a mistake for somebody that I'm not. So you know, with WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. I subscribe to that mentality and. That'll, you know, it'll either be my downfall or it'll be my crowning moment. So, but I'm, I'm never going to change this. This is me. This is who I am. You know, if you don't like it, toss. Well, Barry, is there anything you miss about New York? The Italian food. That's it. That's you can't it. find good Italian food down here. You know? huh? It's all rice and beans. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you can't get good. You, you can't get good pizza. You can't get good bagels either. So. Oh, uh, really? So no, no Italian food, no bagels, no pizza. But if you want rice and beans, that's the place to be. Oh uh, yeah, tostones. You know, it's all good. <laughs> now, how do you see? I, I don't know what. Oh, uh, but you know what? You know what I don't. You know what I don't miss about New York? I used to have to pay twenty-three dollars a day in tolls to go to and from my job. I, I don't miss. I don't miss the the. Spending 75% more on taxes on my tobacco up in New York. Yeah. Uh, I don't miss the, the taking an hour to drive across town in Manhattan. You know, it's just, it's, it's such a better way of life down here. It's like, I'm more relaxed. I'm calmer. I'm enjoying my cigars more. They taste better. I love my job for a change. So you know, to, to say, do I miss anything from New York? I could deal with not finding good pizza and good bagels, so I'm, it's all good. There you go. So now with it, I, I don't know where exactly you are there in Miami. Do you get a lot of tourism in your area? You know, we, we're right by the airport, so a lot of times when there's various stores that come to visit or consumers come to visit, they'll reach by and we'll invite them to come up to the war room. Uh, we don't have like a, a walkthrough area. Um, you know, there's other companies down here that are set up where they have a shop or they, they, they have an area that's open to consumers. Uh, our shop, our company isn't set up like that. But, you know, if anybody ever wanted to come by, they're more than welcome to come by for a cigar. But uh, I wouldn't say we get as much foot traffic as the places that are set up for that type of customer, uh, consumer. So it's a little bit different. So we don't get a lot of tourism in our, in our uh, yeah, offices. You just don't have a storefront, right? No, no, and most most shops and most companies don't, but they have an area that's more or less open to consumers that would like to come by uh, by request. You know, it's never it's never good to just show up and say, "Hey, I'm a consumer from so and so. Can I see your place?" So, and one so, thing about the cigar industry, it's so family based. You know, yeah. everybody. You know, even though we're all fighting for areas on on humidor shelves, there's a sense of family down here. You know, everybody gets along, you know, I, when John Gonzalez was with my father, I used to sit and play with him in dominoes, you know, forget about that we were competitors. So, you know, the, the various reps that come through neighborhood humidor, we sit and play dominoes, you know, everybody gets along. There's, there's no animosity within the industry uh, that I've run into, you know, face to face. Right. As a uh, hey Barry, has Jason converted you to a heat fan yet? I'm not a basketball fan, um, but I I did get into the Heat last year. It was yeah. probably the only the only thing I've I've adapted to down here uh, in terms of sports teams. So he's converted would, you. Yeah, I wouldn't call myself a Heat fan because I'm not a fan of basketball. But right. you know, still give me still give me the NCAA tournament over the NBA any given day. I agree. Yeah, uh, uh, Matt has a question in the chat room, and I was going to ask this too when I when I was talking about the tweet ups and things. He goes, "With it seems there's so many different cigar festivals out there nowadays. How hard is it as uh, well? You deal with this with the marketing aspect of it. How hard is it to handle all the influx of all these little festivals popping up all over the place?" You know, it's it's tough because a, a lot of a lot of the festivals, 
You know, some of the festivals, they'll pay you a, a, an amount for the cigars to offset the cost. Some of the festivals, you know, they, they don't pay for the cigars. Um, they use the money that they charge the consumers for food, which is, you know, understandable. So it becomes costly. So it's hard to say yes to everybody, but at the same time, you don't want to say no to anybody. Because the more cigars that we can put into consumers' hands, the more likely are they are to eventually smoke one of them and not pass it off to a friend. So it's kind of like a word of mouth type of advertising, but it is getting tough. You know, it seems like at any given time, there's three or four festivals a month. And like, you know, if you look at like, like the ones up in uh, Pennsylvania, you got both Famous and CI, they got those big festivals. Now they're one of the good guys, they, you know, they, they take care of us. So it's, it's not as bad, but when you think about all the cigars that you have to give out, you know, and then that's one less cigar that somebody's gonna buy at a brick and water. So there's kind of like a catch 22 going on. You want the consumers to have access to your cigar, but at the end of the day, the job is to sell cigars. Right. So we haven't, no, we haven't drawn a line in the sand. We'll continue to support these festivals. We'll continue to be at these festivals. Um, you know, we want to, we want to see the consumers. We want to be able to hang out with you. We want to be able to put our cigar in your hands. So it's tough, but it's not life ending at this point. Now with the Fed, do you see, now I know you brought up the ones around me with uh, CI and famous. Um, do you see those big festivals as being anything better than the small ones or do you see the small ones being better to reach consumers than the big ones they they both have the benefits the large ones uh, of course more people will be there the more people that will have your cigar uh the more people that will try your cigar and potentially the more people that will become fans of your cigar the small ones are better in the sense that you're able to interact, you know, with the consumer. You're able to spend five minutes with them at their table talking about your cigars, having them get to know the most interesting men in the cigar business in Nesta Miranda. Um, so that's a benefit of a small show. The big shows, the, the consumer doesn't get that one-on-one. -on -one. It's more like, all right, here's a cigar. The cigar's going to my bag. I hope I can remember what they said the 10 seconds it took me to go through their booth. So... There's a plus and minus to both situations. Now, nice. oh, good, Mike. Did you have something? No, go I was going to ask no, uh, Barry. Or I see a lot of trend in the cigar industry where more and more manufacturers are starting to promote brick and mortar only cigars, where they're not giving to these uh, to the big word. Well, basically, they're almost all here in Pennsylvania, <laughs> the big online companies. Yeah. Um, do you see Miami? doing anything of, of the sorts with more brick and mortar and less online sales? You know, we're trying to support the brick and mortar as best as we can. Um, some of the catalogs out there have stores attached right. um, to the catalogs. So you, you sell them, they get their cigars for the stores, but they'll still sometimes make it into the catalog. Um, we're making a, an effort not to sell any of the catalogs, the cigars in massive quantities that will allow them to constantly throw the cigar out there um, in the face of the consumer. The brick and mortar is really important to us. Um, we want the brick and mortar to be the primary focal point for our cigars. Uh, but at the same time, you can't stop it 100%. Um, we can only price protect them. Um, and we hope to continue that going into 2013. Uh, but we are making a concerted effort to support the brick and mortar uh, because it, they support us as well. So. Nice. Do you see anything? And that's what you need. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I Go wanted ahead. to say. Uh, Less I talk. That, that's why I was thinking. <laughs> um, also with the with the cigars with the with pricing and everything else i i hear it a lot now i don't know i i live in a cheap area everybody here is cheap everybody knows i'm cheap but uh a lot of people seem to be going to the lower cost cigars rather than spending eight nine ten dollars for a stick or else they're just buying boxes uh do you see miami coming out with anything in in the near future where they can compete like in a four or five dollar cigar range well we, we came out with the onion onzas this year which is a uh, it's a less expensive of a cigar um that we've come out with in the past 
Um, the Robustos, the Robustos at 650, which is you know lower than what the special selection is. Um, to come out with a five six dollar cigar is something we work on, um, but we're very tough critics, so we won't put anything out there that we feel that we can't smoke on an everyday basis. We won't create a cigar at a price price point just for the sake of creating a price point. It's something that's always on the table, something that's always in the works. If we come across a blend that we as a company like, that we can put out there at that price point, by all means, it will be out there at that price point, but the cigar has to be right. Okay, so you just aren't actively searching for something in that price range. You're going to just see how the blends go, and then you just put the cigar out as long as it's a good blend at whatever price that you can, for the best price that you can, basically. Yeah, when we when we go into the factory to blend, we don't say, all right, let's blend. Show me what we can do for $5. You know, we work on the various blends. We work on the various tobacco. And different tobacco has a different cost and a different price, depending on the aging, the type of tobacco, the region it's from. You know, so many different things come into to play. You know, was it a good crop year? Was it a bad crop year? So when we're creating a cigar, we're not creating it, you know, with price first. We're creating a cigar that we believe in. We're creating a cigar that we would be happy with. And we're creating a cigar that we hope will be forever in the marketplace. Um, we don't want it to be a one-hit wonder. Um, why we've come out with limited editions, limited editions will never be the focal point of our company, at least at this point in time. You know, we want a long-term relationship with consumers with stores um like like i said the family aspect is very big in miami uh, and we want the family aspect to relate in our cigars we want we want that long-term relationship with everybody involved we don't want that quick hit so the cigar has to be right you know by like i said by all means if we come we come across a blend that works at the five dollar range it will be out on the shelves at the five dollar range but it has to be right cool no. Well, Barry, let me ask you this. Uh, you guys came out with it a while ago. You came out with a cigar just for New York. Do you guys, are you looking at possibly doing for other states as well, a cigar just for other states, especially where the taxes are so high? It, it's been discussed, but unfortunately that was discussed before I came on board. It, it hasn't been a focal point of conversation since I got here. Um, so there's nothing really in the works. It's something I'll bring up again the next time I'm in the war room to see if there's anything we can do for some of the other states. Uh, but I don't see it happening in the near future. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's just nothing really in the works. Okay. Now, uh, Matt has another question and I was gonna, I, I know exactly where he's going with this. Um, I asked it before and ask uh, other people about it on the show with the catalog sales. Do you think the price protection aspect is more important than, you know, say uh, there, there's manufacturers like they'll sell like CI famous, you know, the big boys, they'll sell to them at a cheaper price and tell them they can sell at a cheaper price than what say the brick and mortar can. Do you think it's more of a, if everybody would price protect their product and say, you have to sell for this price, maybe 10% discount max or something that that would help? I think it would help to a degree, but it would still hurt states that have a high tax. Um, but at the same point, you know, you, you got people who live like you. I believe you live in uh, Red Lion, Pennsylvania. And I don't know if I should have held my tongue on that or not. So my apologies. But, but I don't know how many brick and mortars are around you. So uh, like a person like you, it's, it's easier for you to get our cigars through the catalog. So in that aspect, the catalogs help us. But then in a place like New York, the catalogs can hurt because they're selling them at MSRP, even if they're price protected, and people are now circumventing the tax. So that hurts. It hurts, it hurts the state. It hurts the city. It hurts the local brick and mortar. So trying to find the right answer to, to how to include the catalogs into having our product while protecting a brick and mortar it's it's uh, it's an equation that's very difficult you have to be able to balance the both because the catalogs get our cigars in the hands of somebody that doesn't live near a brick and mortar but at the same time they hurt the brick and mortar 
So there's a balance that's constantly trying to be worked. Unfortunately, not everybody's going to be happy. Um, we're trying to make everybody happy. I think every company out there wants everybody to be happy, but it, yeah. it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it's difficult. I, I don't envy, you know, Rene Castaneda who handles, he, you know, he does all the international sales and he's the liaison between the catalogs and us. I don't envy his position because at the same time that you want to get the cigars out there, but you don't want to hurt anybody. So I don't envy the job that he does. And I think he does his job tremendously, but I'm sure there's people in the brick and mortar that feel he doesn't. And I'm sure there's people in the catalogs that feel he doesn't. There's, there's no happy medium. At least we haven't been able to find that happy medium. Now, yet. Let me throw a, a kink in the works there. How would your opinion change? Do you think? If everybody, if the online uh, stores would have to like, well, Amazon is, I know in Pennsylvania now it's doing it in a couple states, if they had to collect the state sales tax, do you think that would help out any? Yeah, I think that would, I, I personally, and this is a personal opinion, it's not an opinion of Miami Cigar and Company. Um, I haven't discussed with anybody at work to know what their opinion is, but personally, I think that would help. And give that window washer um, a cigar. <laughs> 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 that's the owner that's the owner oh. of the shop so he's trying to stay busy because we got the tv volume off he's probably going when the hell is this thing gonna end so <laughs> yeah, tell him so <laughs> hey barry let's take another question quick from the chat sure. room john g just joined us he says uh i'm sure your job in the cigar industry is far from typical but what is your day like at miami cigar so tell everybody a typical day if there is a typical day for you at miami cigar all right, being uh, you guys really want to know this? Uh, they want to know, uh, Barry. All right, I'll tell you the whole thing. I will, you know, I will leave, this. leave out the I'm bathroom gonna, trips. I'm going to tell you everything in detail that you probably didn't want to know. Leave out the bathroom trips. All right. Well, that's that's it. There's no yeah. other part of the day. No. <laughs> yeah, I come in. I have my Cuban coffee. I'll catch up with Hector Paz, our director of sales. I'll speak with Cody McKeon, who provides sales support for our great reps. Nilo Perez, who's a phone rep in the office, and uh, Yaramis as well, who handles. Uh, she's the liaison with all the stores between the stores and the reps in the warehouse. Uh, my cup of Cuban coffee. I'll head up to my office. I'll light my first cigar today. I'll deal with all the emails that I got from our international clients because of the time difference. You know, I'll get emails that'll come in at three, four in the morning from Germany. Uh, being especially since uh, Jason and Nesta Miranda were just at Inter Tabac, which is the trade show in Germany. After that, it's done. Uh, usually, Renee will come into the office or Nesta will come into the office. Um, we'll discuss the open projects of the day. Um, well, you know, typical office joking around, focus on what has to be focused on, keep the spirits high, which Nest is great at, easiest boss I've ever worked for. Um, and it's those it's those meeting, those meetings that turned into the creation of the Nesta Miranda bobblehead, which we finally got um, delivered this week. So we're going to start sending them out to shops. And uh, I'll let you guys give one away on your site. Figure out how you want to do it. Let me know who the winner is, and uh, I'll send this. I'll send the bobblehead out. You know, you want to pick somebody that's in the chat room now. Go ahead and do that. Or if you another way of doing it, feel free. Um, but that, you know, we'll do that. Then I'll handle the stores. I'll work on whatever new advertising campaigns we're doing. Um, I just finished a new campaign, which will be in the next cigar snob. Um, which will feature all of the Nesta Miranda cigars in the ad instead of focusing on one specific uh, brand. Uh, pretty much that's it at that point, you know, dealing with the customers, dealing with the advertising, answering marketing questions, horsing around on Twitter, um, wasting an hour of everybody's time by doing shows like this. And uh, that's pretty much, that's pretty much my day. It's a, it's a laid back day. It's a lot of work, but it doesn't feel like work. So it's a laid back day for me. Now I find I'm 43 years old and I finally got the job that I don't consider to be a job. Nice. You know, I found happiness in work. Hey, nice. Barry's actually older than I am. All right. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> You freaking hippie. By a year, <laughs> but hey. <laughs> well, listen. Let's uh, let's let's uh, let's ask Barry the ultimate the chat question. All right. 
Go ahead right. and ask them. Yeah, I was going to say you're you're really losing your voice. It seems. <laughs> the the question you I, I I'm not sure if we asked you last time or not, but the uh, the the chat question of the decade here has been: If you are on your deathbed, you're you're dying. That's it. You're done. What is the last cigar you would smoke? Wow. And that's the response. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? You, you know what? It, it's tough to say because, like, right now, you know, the the cigar that I can't stop smoking is the Nesta Miranda Connecticut. Um, like I told you, I've gone through boxes and boxes. Yeah. If you read a cigarsmoker.com, the only cigar that I gave a hundred points was uh, Padron Principe. Um, so it, it it really would depend on my moment. Right now, if you told me I had two hours to live, I would probably smoke a Nesta Miranda Connecticut. You ask me again in six months, it'll probably be something else. You know, I, I, when it comes to cigars, I got ADD. <laughs> cool. So, well, so then for right now, it'd be the Nestor Miranda, Connecticut. It would be nice. Right. That works. Yes. Yep. Cool. Well, Barry, is there anything? Oh, good. We got your video back again. Is there anything that we didn't touch base on before we let you go that you want to touch base on? Well, for those in New York, uh, we'll be October 23rd and 24th. We'll be doing the official Fernando Leon launch at Cigar Inn. Cool. Um, the weekend after that, we'll be at the the Tampa Cigar Bash or Cigar Expo. It's you know, it's another one of those festivals we were just talking about, hosted by Tampa Humidor. Um, all cigars we touched on, you got the Añoranza, you know, the box press based on the Grand Reserve, Merlin from La Serena, Nesta Miranda, Connecticut, La Aurora, uh, Preferito Diamond, Fernando Leon, Cian Años. Um, it's all out there. Anybody has any specific questions, they can reach out to me, uh, MCC Barry on Twitter. And uh, you, hopefully you guys keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's always fun to be on your show. I don't know why you guys want me on your show, but I have fun doing it. And uh, that's pretty much it. We, we discussed it all. We touched base and everything. So, All right. You know. Sweet. Well, uh, what we'll do is everybody in the chat now and everybody who watches this video when it goes up, we're going to let it run for another week, Barry. Leave a comment on the video uh, and, uh, you know, tell us what your favorite part of the show was. And we'll pick a winner for the Nesta Miranda's bobblehead, and we'll send it off to Barry. And I'll do this. If there's over 50 comments, we'll do two bobbleheads. Oh. Well, there you go. Now even now, now even more uh, reason to make sure you leave a comment. Well, uh, Barry, send our respect to Nesta and uh, to Guillermo, and uh, thanks so much for doing the show again. Will do. Nesta's, I, actually, anybody who was watching this live, uh, Nesta's in Albuquerque today at Monty's Cigar Festival another festival um like i said they're happening all the time uh so be sure to check them out if you're in that part of the country otherwise i'll see you all uh you know in the social media sphere all right well barry thanks again buddy man and, and uh, have a good one all right enjoy the rest of your weekend guys peace we, thanks, we will brother. thanks peace all righty just mike and i now um i it's a good show with barry it's nice to get caught up you know with with uh with what he's doing it's interesting to hear the the different sides of the equation especially with barry being a blogger formerly and now actually working for one of the companies um switch here there we go and uh i don't know what do you think mike i i think it went very well yeah i mean we had his audio more than we did the last time so that was a positive and uh you know it was very generous of barry to um to give away, you know, a couple of the new bobbleheads that are limited to a couple of our uh, viewers watching the show, which is always very nice. So, yeah, I enjoyed it being sick, but I still enjoyed it. And I want to thank Barry again. So uh, thank everybody in the chat room. And uh, most of you are logging off already. So but uh, thanks so much for the support. We can't tell you when the next show is because right now we have nothing booked for next month. But I think we're going to have two shows next month. Um, so watch the so site. Just hang in there. We'll keep, yeah, we'll keep you posted on the site. We'll keep you posted on Twitter, and we'll let you know when the next show is. So that's it. That's, all, that's I got. all I got. So hopefully everybody have a good rest of the weekend, and thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. See ya.